This morning, we look quickly for the time that we have understanding the person and the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Understanding the person and the ministry of the Holy Ghost. John chapter 14 and verse 18. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you comfortless. And God cannot lie. In John chapter 14 and verse 26, further reiterating the stand of God concerning you and I, he said in verse 26, both the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He began by saying to them, I will not leave you comfortless. There is coming to you a comforter. And who is this comforter? The Holy Ghost. In the Amplified Version, it renders verse 26 as the helper. So you put it side by side, it means I will not leave you helpless. I will send you help. And who is this help? The Holy Ghost. The power of the highest himself. The one before whom all things are possible. The one before whom nothing is hidden. The one who has access to the mind of God. The one who has access to the counsel of God. He said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But these things he has revealed to us by the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep and secret things of God. He is the comforter, our helper. In the name of Jesus, every area of life where you and I will need help, his help will no more elude us. Amen. I'd like for this to register in your spirit. You are not helpless. No matter the challenge, no matter the situation, he said there is no temptation that has come unto a man, but such as is common. God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. In the same temptation, he will make a way of escape. And one of the principal channels for that way of escape is the Holy Ghost, the helper himself. A very present help in the time of need. The same helper that brought about creation. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Everything was in chaos. But the helper stepped in and structure came. Order came. Life came. Everything that needed to be came to be. Man was made out of dust. Man was a statue. Man was lifeless. And then came the helper, entered into man, and man became a living soul, the help of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus the Christ, everything dying in your life and in my life, everything that has not been working, by the breath of the Holy Ghost, there is a quickening this morning in the name of Jesus. Every dying organ, every dead organ, every challenge in your health, every challenge in your body, by the breath of the Spirit, I decree a quickening in the name of Jesus. 
I was teaching some time ago in the Bible school on the subject of the Holy Ghost. And in the midst of that teaching, I kept hearing in my spirit, the Holy Ghost is the quickening spirit. The Holy Ghost is the life-giving spirit. You can't carry that spirit and be suffering death or deadness on your inside. No, that spirit cannot be in you. And then your organs are fading. Your organs are not working. And then I told the people everything that the Holy Ghost was laying in my heart to say to them. But in the midst of it, I remembered that I had this pain, strange pain in my hand. It was as though a string is tied from, my, from the tip of my finger straight to my arm. And once in a while, there is someone pulling it. And every time he pulls it, you can literally see my hand move up. Not in not a movie, real life. Even in the side, I sit down, when the pain comes, the hand moves by itself. It was intense, it was fierce. But as that lecture was going on, the Holy Ghost began to connect my hand to it. And as I left the class, I said to myself, I'm not driving. I walked from the facility to the office. And as I was going, I was screaming and shouting, the quickening spirit lives in me. The life-giving spirit is in me. This hand cannot continue to trouble me. In the name of if the spirit of him that raised Jesus up from the dead dwells in you, the same spirit shall quicken your mortal body. I was screaming and shouting and throwing the hand and doing all of that. By the grace of God, I didn't know when the pain left. But the pain is gone and gone for life. The Holy Ghost is our helper. The Holy Ghost is the life-giving spirit. The Holy Ghost is the quickening spirit. In what areas of our life does he help us? We'll mention a few of it. Number one is the helper of our faith. Is the helper of our faith. Is God the spirit of faith. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. We also having the same spirit of faith. I believed. And therefore I have spoken. We also believe. And therefore we speak. Having the same spirit of faith. He is the helper of our faith. He strengthens our faith. He empowers our faith. He keeps our faith on the path of consistent growth. He keeps our faith from failing. He keeps our faith from failing. Understand that faith can fail. Peter was walking on water. His faith failed. He couldn't get to Jesus. Jesus had to pull him out. Jesus even said to him, Peter, the devil desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. The Holy Ghost is the helper of our faith. He's the spirit of revelation. Is the spirit of revelation that fires up our faith. Paul prayed for the Ephesian church that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. The supernatural base of is the fountain of insight. The Holy Ghost, the helper of our faith. There is weak faith, there is strong faith. If your faith must move from weak to strong, understand that you need the help of the Holy Ghost. He's the helper of our faith. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God from belief, but was strong in faith. The helper of our faith. Number two, the Holy Ghost is the helper of our weaknesses. Is the helper of our weaknesses. The quickening spirit. Ephesians 3 verse 16. He said that God will grant you to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, inner strength. Remember in Proverbs 24 verse 10 he said if you faint in the day of battle it is because your strength is small. He will strengthen you in the inner man. Not only does he give us inner strength, he gives us emotional strength. Gives us physical strength. Romans 8, 11. If the spirit of him that raised Jesus up from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal body. You and I don't have to live in weakness. We don't have to be feeble. You can engage the help of the Holy Ghost. He is 
the helper of our weaknesses, emotional weaknesses, physical weaknesses, spiritual weaknesses, is our strength. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31. As thou not know, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. God is increasing your strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Why? Because the Lord shall renew their strength. It says, Say thou, Neake parados In the name of Jesus, every weakness in your body and in my body gives way to strength. He said, the Lord hear you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you, send you help from his sanctuary. How? Strengthen you out of Zion. Strengthen you out of Zion. That is what someone is returning with from here. No matter how you came, you are living here stronger than you came. You are living here healthier than you came. You are living here with your strength fully restored. He said, and the spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me. The spirit that enforces and engenders strength is infused inside of you. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, you need strength to command exploits. They that do know their God, they shall be strong. They shall... Weaklings don't do exploits. You need supernatural strength to command exploits. You look at the exploit of God's servant, the chancellor, Dr. David Edepo, amongst other things, unusual strength. Strange dimension of strength. At his age, walking late into the AMs, 2 AM, 1 AM, yet come see, come for service, 5 30 AM, Abba. Unusual strength, unusual strength. The help of the Holy Ghost. It is not how long you sleep, it is how refreshed you are in the sleep. A person can sleep for eight hours and wake up tired. And yet, you sleep for two hours, you are refreshed. The help of the Holy Ghost. That you close your eyes doesn't mean you are asleep. A person can close his eyes rather than sleeping, he's doing warfare. When he wakes up, he's sweating. And you're wondering what happened. Something happened. But he gives his beloved sleep. Sound sleep. Refreshing sleep. He's the helper of our weaknesses. He gives us inner strength. What's more, the Holy Ghost is our seal of protection. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. It's our seal of protection. It protects us against the assault of the wicked. The seal of our protection. Psalm chapter 105, verse 13 to 15. When they went from one nation to the other, from one kingdom to another, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. He's our helper. He helps to defend us. He helps to protect us against all assault of the wicked. The Holy Ghost. It's the seal of our protection. And finally, as we round up, the Holy Spirit helps us out of confusion and doubts. He helps us out of confusion. You are in a state, you don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. You don't know which way to turn, what way to go. You can't explain where the battles are coming from. You don't know how to respond or how to react. The help of the Holy Ghost is what you and I, we need to engage. It's the spirit of guidance. He helps the quality of our decisions. He helps the quality of our choices. One of us says, find this morning said, having had a major setback, he realized I've been depending on my strength rather than on God. And amongst other things, he made a decision to follow God and depend on God. And he said, the Holy Spirit helped him in making quality decisions. Quality decisions. And here he is today, standing strong, boisterous in the Spirit. Why? The helper is the Spirit of guidance. Psalm chapter 23, 
verse 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. It is the responsibility of the shepherd to guide the sheep. In Psalm 32, verse 8, Psalm 32 and verse 8, he said, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my own eyes. I, the Lord. How does he do that? The Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. And the Lord thy God, which leadeth thee in the way that thou shouldest go, I'm the God that teaches your hands to profit out through the ministry of the Holy Ghost. The ministry of the Holy Ghost is the spirit of guidance. And it doesn't lead people backward. Every of his guidance always leads forward. Every of his guidance always results in advancement. He leads people out of scarcity into plenty. He said, you have brought us into our wealthy place. How? By his guidance. They tasted not when he led them. He caused the rock to bring forth, gushing out with waters. In the name of Jesus, every kind of financial tension, financial trouble that you and I may have gotten into, God by his spirit will bring us out. Amen. He will lead you out of it. Amen. He will instruct you out of it. Amen. He will show you the way to go. Amen. He will show you the steps to take. Rise up on your feet. No more confusion.